Hey guys, it's Thursday, um, March 2nd, 2023. Today is going to be Navy SEALs Day. Um, the goal is six minutes at six reps a minute, uh, and then settle into fives, and hopefully finish off with seven at the end, which will give me the magic 108. <coughs> 108 is a sacred number in a lot of different traditions. Um, one of my favorite numbers to hit. No matter what. Good day, bad day, whatever. I like hitting that 108. Um, I'm progressing nicely with the sixes. The best I've done is 10 minutes, six reps a minute. Um, this session, this training block, I've dropped down from starting out with sevens. Um, I've been experimenting with sixes and settling the fives. Um, I just seem to be redlining too quickly lately with the sevens. I don't know why. Um, uh, sixes seem much more humane, uh, easier, not easier, but entirely doable. It doesn't put me on that edge, um, which if you just step a tiny bit over that edge, you have a hard time recovering. Um, and I'm trying to keep from hitting that point. That's my end point. I don't want it three minutes into uh, a 20 minute session and four minutes into a 20 minute session. So six has been much better. Um, when I finish this training block, I don't know when that's gonna be. Could be today, it could be one or two more. <coughs> um, what I'm gonna do is introduce seven back in, but only for that first minute. And then I'll progress with sixes after that. I get all in the fives. Um, and I'll keep that up for a while. Maybe the session after that, I'll do two minutes uh, at seven. But we'll see. The goal right now is just sixes. The next training block is going to have that one minute of sevens in. Uh, and I might actually keep that like that for a while. All right, let's grab a sip of water. Hit the go button. Fifty seconds on the countdown. <coughs> six minutes, six reps a minute. What I've liked about my sixes and fives lately is they have felt fairly explosive. I've been able to get them in and then have a little bit of rest time at the top of the minute. With my fives, I can usually start accumulating um, some extra time, which is always nice. I can use it for rest or I can use it for extra reps at the end. Five seconds. There we go. One. Two. Three. Six. Four. 
Oh. 
Using up that whole rest. Put some pressure. It's tough, but <coughs> excuse me again. Uh, entirely in the realm of possible. Um, the fives were getting tougher, but at no point did I think I can't hold on to five. <coughs> um, just entire chest and shoulders were going fatigue, fatigue. Um, <coughs> legs tired, but again, um, it was that type of fatigue that you evaluate and know that you have more versus the <coughs> um, starting to red line and there's no coming back. I thought about getting <coughs> six seconds last minute. Um, which I've done the past couple sessions, but that's <coughs> made it harder to get seven. I mean, it's a trade-off. It's the same number of reps. Well, six and six would be the same number of reps, but <coughs> I always feel good pushing for seven on that last, because I know I put it all out there on that last, last minute. Hit that 108. That's that's uh, that's set dedicated to uh, barefoot burpees and 108. I got pull ups next. Pull ups and dips. I'm actually feeling pretty beat. <coughs> Another minute in me at sixes. So I should. 
should probably do this for at least one more session. Get to seven minutes in. And push maybe a little bit harder that last five minutes. And maybe finish the training block off with 110. Still four reps below my best. But I'm coming back after two bad sessions. Oops, sorry. Two bad training blocks. I want to finish this one. It might not be a PR, <coughs> but it would be a solid session, solid block, and um, will give me some momentum. I'm coming back feeling good, feeling strong, not beat up, not like um, not like I didn't do my best throughout the whole training block. As I mentioned, the next block will contain one seven, no more, except for the end. <clears throat> Those end minutes are a free for all. You know, you get what you get. <clears throat> At least as you're progressing through the training block. Today's a dip day. Yesterday was sort of a tonic day. Seventeen and a half pounds hooked up here. Again, <clears throat> my powerlifting friends would laugh. Call that ridiculous. Go up to twenty. Say at fifteen, go up to twenty. Actually, they wouldn't say say at fifteen, they'd say go to twenty. <clears throat> There's little increment great weight gains were not in their uh, frame of mind. However, I like them. I gotta choke up on this a little bit. Um, probably going to be 10 sets of one, and then on my dips, sets of threes. We'll see how it goes. Brush it through anything. I said threes, right?
Set to maybe a little too soon. But I'll extend the rest as I get tired. Three sets of three will leave me one short of 10 reps, not that I have to get 10. Last time I did three sets of three, and with 15, I did uh, I added on 25, did one rep of 25. I may do something similar today. Sets, dips, set number three, right? Before pull ups. up here on my pull-ups. Put on my belt. Slowly wind it over and do another uh, set. Um, and then come back do my dips. Mainly because I got 10 sets of pull-ups. I got uh, 7 more to do. And only 2 more sets of dips. None of this has to make sense. Just need to do it. Set four. having to uh, take it off to continue with my dips. This way, I stay on track. One more rep brings me halfway there. Done with the dips. Five. 
maybe a last sec. I'll even double up on those. <coughs> Get two reps. We'll see how it goes. As of now, it feels like a possibility, but what feels like a possibility at set five might not feel like a possibility at set nine or eight. Goblet squats. Set one, two sets of these. Set six. Keep a track. I won't forget. Finish off the goblet squats. I will probably finish off my dips, or I'm sorry, my pull ups before. Before I go into swings, just to see my grip, I'm going to double up again on my pull ups. Three minutes at seven, and then I'll do my goblet sweats. with the squats. So number eight.
that's left. And last, I decide to go for a double. I got two options that I'm thinking of. Um, one, sorry. <clears throat> I'm thinking one set of two, finish things off, I'm going to my swings. I'm going to stick light with my swings. We did a one set of ten yesterday. Um, I'm having a little issue with my upper mid back. Uh, not sure exactly from what, probably a combination of things. Um, maybe the fact that I'm 21 days into a 40-day 40, 40 program. Um, different moves, new moves. Um, maybe going a little heavier or more quickly than I should have, whatever. Um, keeping it at 20 and keeping the rest really easy made my back feel almost immediately better. So anyway, let's talk about my options. I can do a double, or I can go up, put another five on, do a single rep with 22 and a half pounds, which would be a recent 2023 weighted pull-up PR for a single. If you count single, if you count pull-ups as PRs, for me. It seems uh, pull-up PR should be in the number of reps you get versus um, how much. But since I'm doing an easy strength program, I can, and I've done weighted pull-ups in the past, I think my recent best was hooking up the 16 kilogram kettlebell, so 35 pound pull-up. So 22 and a half would be a PR. But two reps with 17 and a half pounds is nothing to sneeze at either. Let's get one rep in, see how it feels, and then on the side, on the fly. first set of one. <coughs> and I'm done. Set for swings. I said I did an easy set of 10 yesterday, maybe take it up to 12 reps. I think I mentioned my depth perception issue. I should come with a reminder somewhere on me that says objects are almost always closer than they appear or sometimes farther. Sticking with one set, but right now, I do two occasionally, but I don't feel as I need them. Quickly, um, I want to demonstrate one arm long cycle, one arm cleans, one arm long cycle, um, or Push presses too. We'll see how it goes. Okay. 
the mistake you most often see people trying to do higher rep kettlebell work they fry their grip because they grip in the middle and palm is bending backwards um, it's like you're in a keto wrist lock someone the weights guiding you around versus you guiding the rep guiding the weight There's ways to approach the bell. I'm not going to get overly technical. Basically, the bell is in front of you. You're going up to the far end. If I'm using my right hand, I'm going up in the far end. It doesn't have to be all the way over, but towards that corner, I'm making the OK symbol. I lock my fingers, um, my thumb, my index finger, and then I wrap my other fingers around the bell. So here, here, hips are back, they swing under, now look, it's diagonal, straight down, sitting on the butt of the palm. My elbow is shooting down towards, it's not going to touch the iliac crest, that little knotty bone, but it's heading down in that direction. When I go to clean again, what I don't want to do is throw the bell out. I'm not swinging it out. I'm just letting it fall forward and I follow it along right back. It's going to nestle right in there. You can turn the thumb or you can go straight. Both work. Elbow down. I want to maximize that connection because this is my launch pad. I'm going into a jerk. First step pushing forward like I'm doing a sissy squat. If you guys remember sissy squats before they had the machine, you push forward and then I'm going to catch it, the second dip, second squat, overhead. Now one more mistake that's often made is people use a negative to bring it down as if they're doing a press, as if they're doing a uh, kettlebell press, bodybuilding press. Um, what you want to do Drop it, catch it on the chest. Exhale. The grip is the same for your swings. It's the same for cleans. It's the same for push press. It's the same for regular press. It's the same for snatches and half snatches. Up in that corner, OK sign, wrap it around, sitting on the butt of the palm, diagonal, only at crest. Even if you're doing the half snatch, this is your rest position. You can get some rests over there, but you're engaging an awful lot of smaller muscles to rest for a longer period of time versus using a lot of muscle a lot of leverage, a lot of bone against bone. I'm not leaning back with it, pushing the hips forward. That keeps me, not only does it maximize my rest position, does it decrease the amount of distance from the elbow to the iliac crest, but it gives me that launch pad as I go right into it. All right, that is Kettlebell Sport, GS, how to clean, how to do jerks and long cycle. I hope that's helpful <clears throat> to some of my friends who are doing some kettlebell stuff. Watching, uh, watching you guys do kettlebell stuff really does start to inspire me to want to get back to it. But right now, I'm enjoying the body weight stuff too much. I'm enjoying the burpees. Kettlebells, uh, sport, long cycle. <clears throat> Such a great standalone exercise, especially the double. <clears throat> you can do your five-minute set of double long cycle. Followed by a set of uh, goblet squats or regular squats, pull-ups and dips, and you're completely done. If I were to do it right now, 
it would be probably at this moment, this time in my life, burpees, long cycle, um, <clears throat> excuse me, pull-ups, and then alternate goblet squats and dips each day. That's a lot. Um, ideally, if I was shooting for big numbers on my long cycle, I would do that first and then burpees. Maybe alternate days of burpees with days of pull-ups and dips. That would give me a break from burpees, um, which would mean my 400 plus day streak of um, burpees every day would come to an end. <clears throat> my working out every day streak would continue. I don't even know how long that is. Several years, I'm sure. <clears throat> um, interesting question from uh, Duncan Walsh, who always has a lot of great, it's a great, he has a great channel, great workouts, great training advice. But when he uh, um, replies to specifically to my, I was going to say specifically to my workouts, but he has great insights to offer to my after uh, burpee talk and to the workouts themselves. And sometimes they um, are intertwined. Is that a word? Is that two words combined? Um, in one great point. And yesterday he asked about um, what I thought, or if I thought, that this type of training, specifically <clears throat> counting burpees for six counts and Navy SEALs and um, the style of shooting for PRs, sort of becomes OCD um, <clears throat> in a way. And honestly, probably, yes, a little bit. But it all depends on how lightly you can hold it. Um, yes, we're counting reps. And yes, we're shooting for more and we're, de we're devising plans and strategies for hitting more reps. And yes, Sometimes late at night before I go to sleep, um, planning out the next day uh, workout. And if I only add a rep here, then I can get this many reps. And that's two more than I got last time. Um, that can become a little much. And I'm not OCD, but I am. I, I become very focused and <clears throat> give myself to the details of the things that I do be it throwing myself into a yoga program, meditation program, burpees, ultra running. Um, and OCD is not the way to look at it for me. Addictive, yes. Um, there is a streak in me that is keen to addiction. Um, I went through it with alcohol. Uh, I went through it with some recreational um, drugs. Nothing, I wouldn't say I was ever addicted to any recreational drugs, but I uh, partook fairly heavily, very frequently, um, because it was recreation. Even with my drinking, I like to say I was a social drinker, but I just found every reason in the world to be sociable. Um, and it did help me socially. I went from being uh, shy and introverted and I'd have a few drinks to being outgoing. Um, and definitely more the life of the party than I am in normal situations. And that was fun, especially in my 20s and even in my early 30s. But it becomes a drain. Oddly enough, I never missed a workout, no matter how hungover I was. I remember plenty of Saturday mornings uh, on squat day, squatting with a um, trash can nearby in case... Uh, the night before's uh, activities caught up with me, and they often did. But you just went to the side, you threw up, and you kept going about your business, and you kept doing the reps, you kept doing the heavy squats. It's the price you pay for one, having fun, and for two, wanting to have a big squat. Those two don't really belong together. They shouldn't belong together. But when you're young, you get away with all kinds of stuff. Um, so really, I never like to think that I have a message when I... When I talk, I like just talking. Whatever comes to mind, comes to mind. Um, 
but hold your sessions lightly as well. Don't become too addicted. The stuff that we do is serious. It's there's nothing more serious than your health than fitness, than being active and able to do the things that you love to do, having a strong body to be of service, to help people, to help yourself. But we also do it for fun and it becomes obsessive versus enjoyable. Um, we may need to take a step back, not stop, but just reevaluate why we're doing it, how we're doing it, um, and smile. A single smile changes the nature of everything that we do. If you smile before a set of burpees, it becomes that much easier, that much more less serious. Um, and we're able to approach it with a greater sense of ease. Um, I think I mentioned before, I know I mentioned before that one of the four intentions introduced in primordial sound meditation, after we've meditated, when we're still in that gap in between thoughts, we enter four intentions of which we would wish to live by. Um, joyful, energetic body, loving, compassionate heart, reflective mind, and lightness of being. Um, joyful, energetic body, great intention. All of them are great intentions. But if we keep that in mind, that's what we want. We want a joyful, energetic body, uh, a body that can express joy. And we want lightness of being, which means that we can smile at that burpee set. The mistakes, the reps that we hit, the reps that we miss, all of it. A smile changes everything. A smile before and a smile after, everything changes. One more thing that changes everything, simply being curious. I don't have to hit a PR, but I'm curious how many reps can I do with how I feel today? How many reps can I do with the body that I have today? As they said in Bikram Yoga before every class, perform with the body that you have today. Meaning I'm performing with the body that I have after all the reps I did yesterday and all the reps that I did before and the goblet squats that I did before and the dips that I did before. Um, so it might not be equal to the body that I had coming in a little more fresh. Doesn't matter. I'm curious. What can I do today? What can I do given the conditions and circumstances that I find myself in right now? Maybe mentally, I'm not bringing in my A game. Maybe physically, I'm a little under the weather. Maybe emotionally, I'm stressed out. If you're curious, all that plays in your favor because you can't do anything wrong. You just do what you can. That's pretty important to me. So thank you, Duncan, for um, bringing that to light, for giving me something to think about and um, answering that. And um, that's it. I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. All right. Have a good day. Bye.